Good afternoon and welcome to Rice Dairy TV's The Macro. With me today is Jerry Dreyer from Delray Beach, Florida. Uh, Jerry is going to be talking to us today about his monthly report that he produces for us at Rice Dairy. Jerry Dreyer is, I mean, everybody knows Jerry, but he is the chief market analyst here at Rice Dairy, as well as an independent consultant to the dairy industry. Jerry, glad to have you with us today. Good to be with you, Brian. And it's been since September 7th that you released this monthly report. So a little bit has happened since then, but uh, looking forward to following up with you on that report here today. Hi, Hi as well. Thank you. Good. So let's start with uh, just dive right into the price forecast here. Um, the first thing that stuck out to a few of us here is uh, the change in the class four forecast. Uh, the blue lines were last month's the the August forecast, and the red lines are your current forecast. So you know the forecast before was you know up there, and the red lines are down here. Uh, if we look at the math uh, behind that a bit, um, numerically, the average is 1471 for class four. Whereas in last month's report, uh, I believe you were at 1638, so a difference of about a dollar 67 in your in your class four forecast, and you know definitely true for the difference in the remainder of 2017 as well. Um, what's what's driving your your outlook there? Uh, the old the old uh, nemesis, uh, supply and demand. Um, Supply is um, very strong. Uh, look at the inventory numbers. Uh, they're at historic highs. And on the butter side, sales uh, have been, you know, less than spectacular. They're above a year ago, but nothing major on the butter side of the business. Uh, butter exports haven't gotten any traction, and I'm not sure they will. We seem to sort of be out of that ball game right now. And um, non-fat dry milk, uh, we keep on producing it despite less milk in California. And the Europeans have shifted uh, milk into cheese in overdrive to the point of shorting themselves butter. But they've, they've still got non-fat dry milk, skim milk powder, uh, moving into intervention in excess of the market. And so we've got that inventory hanging over the market as well as uh, our domestic inventory. And I just don't uh, see much upside. I guess, you know, you, you factor into that as well, additional milk production, which is more fat and more skim milk powder on the, on the product side. Got it. And we're looking at a chart here of, you know, really the difference between, as we just said, your outlook here versus current futures are at about uh, 1602. Uh, so definitely, you know, potentially room for the downside here in class four based on that analysis that you're looking at. Uh, th that's my take on it. Uh, I don't, I don't uh, spend any time looking at the futures immediately before I work through my forecast. I find them not a particularly effective uh, forecasting tool. Uh, they kind of lag behind um, in terms of at least where I think the market's headed. That makes sense. Um, good. I think the other thing to note here uh, that I put in is that, you know, if I look at class three, which is the other factor um, driving, you know, driving the milk price other than class four, which we just covered quite a bit, on uh, September 7th is when you released your report, the Class 3 2018 average. This is the, you know, the green line here is the Jandadee's Class 3. Uh, your forecast was at $16 for the year. Uh, we were at about $16.20 at that point. We've kind of dropped right down into the area where you're at. Uh, so Class 3, you're definitely uh, much closer to, and I know it doesn't influence what you look at when you're looking at it, and that's what makes yours valuable in my mind. Uh, however, the threes have kind of lined up with where you're at. Um, second question for you, Jerry, I pulled a couple of charts here. Uh, it's about cheese. So if we're looking at cheese exports, and here's the, uh, 
chart off of your report. Uh, we see 2017, the exports for cheese have been very positive year over year. Uh, biggest year really since 2014 on the charts there. And yet, if we look at stocks uh, for both American and other cheeses, we're just seeing record, record stocks. So exports are good, but stocks are building domestically. What price do we have to get to at the CME to start clearing some of this inventory and, and maybe incentivizing promotions? Yeah, those are a couple of good questions. Um, you know, the, the export market, uh, uh, we've we've uh, been slow to capitalize on all of the potential that's there. Uh, Europe has has been enjoying very good success on the cheese side of the equation, uh, and so that's that's been a bit of an issue. And we talk about exports being strong, but inventories are building because exports clearly aren't as strong as growth in cheese production, and we've seen some fairly sluggish numbers in terms of um, in, in terms of uh, domestic sales the food service side of the business has generally uh, struggled uh, all year compared to the last couple of years and um, retail business is slow we just haven't uh, seen promotions uh, we've also got a couple glitches in the, the data there but um, it basically, it's back to our old supply and demand story. We've just, we're making more cheese uh, than the markets can absorb. And now we're pausing for a commercial break. Here at Rice Dairy, we're brokers. We're industry leaders. We're educators. And we're specialists. We craft and execute risk management strategies for the entire dairy value chain and provide certainty for your business. We study dairy markets and we share what we learn with our customers. We have more than 800 clients from around the world and offices in North America and Europe. When you partner with Rice Dairy, you're part of the family now. Welcome. 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 To Rice Dairy. Own your risk. Own your risk. Own your risk. Own your risk. Welcome back to the macro. Let's jump back in with Jerry Dreyer. You know, you mentioned the the retail sales in the in that answer here. And if I look at, you know, your slide about cheese here, um, yeah, the top bullet point is showing that sales are down 1.2 percent Jan through March and up 3 percent April through June uh, but you're also saying that uh, Kraft is you know kind of refuting some of this you know retail cheese sales data that we're seeing yes yes precisely I mean their uh, their bullet point uh, this this data has never been worth as much stock as most people put in it um, it you know it only captures sales from larger store from uh, larger supermarkets, for example. Not a lot, you know, not a lot of mom and pop operations where a lot of business gets transacted. Uh, it and it's not capturing uh, sales in the new wave and the other end of the equation either. Um, it's not capturing sales in uh, meals that are delivered to the home. Uh, you know, the new mail order concept. Um, can't think of a name of one of the operations right now, but um, and it's not capturing some of the larger, newer warehouses that are at it. It's not capturing some new chains that are entering the business. And Kraft was referring specifically to AC Nielsen data, and the data that I use is IRI data, but they both travel in the same track, and so. I see no reason why that data isn't kind of questionable also. Um, I'm uh, uh, moving toward trying to do some some uh, modeling and create some graphics that that uh, do a better job of showing um, commercial disappearance. 
so we capture both the export side of the business uh, and the domestic side of the business. Uh, doesn't give us channel by channel look at what's going on in the world, but it gives us a total cheese utilization kind of measure. Got it. Well, I look forward to seeing those. Uh, as we've all talked about, demand is so hard to quantify. Yes, it is. Um, question for you, moving on to butter. Um, if we looked at, okay, one second here. So talking about butter, in your report here, you've got uh, last statement about butter in butter price trends. Price levels in the USA market hinge on exports to the EU, which may or may not materialize. And moving product from the US to the EU is a bit tricky uh, because there's huge tariffs. It's not just freight. Um, so if we look at the tariffs, I mean, I think the rule of thumb we're using right now is about $1. ten. The EU needs to be about $1. ten over the USA to justify exports at scale. And right now, if I look at, you know, you've got the EEX October futures, the red line is CME here. So the EEX has been rising. This spread has actually widened out a little bit. And we're at a dollar oh five right now. We're pretty close to that dollar ten level that could justify uh, some, you know, some serious tons moving off the U.S. shores into the EU. Do you see that happening? Uh, I'm not so certain that I do. Uh, I mean, we need that dollar uh, ten spread for an extended period of time, and, you know, for the ducks to all get lined up, for the Europeans to say, "Ha ha, butter in the USA is a better deal," uh, you know, and place those orders. Then we have to make the product to move it. Our domestic manufacturers have always been very hesitant to make 82 percent unsalted butter on spec, you know, just in anticipation of an overseas order. And I'm not hearing of orders materializing anywhere. So I, I think we're going to, we're, that isn't as big an opportunity as it might appear to be in your nifty little graph. Um, and uh, the other foot that comes down is simply New Zealand, which manufactures day in and day out pretty much the butter that a European customer would want. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they have uh, some existing relationships in Europe. And so I suspect uh, if that void gets filled, it'll get filled uh, by New Zealand at this late date in the game. You know, it takes a month or two to move product. And the holiday sales period is right around the corner. This is the middle of September. The opportunity I do see for us um, that could materialize is in the Middle East, and we could move some product there. But I don't see it being enough product to really uh, move the needle very far, the price needle very far. Got it. So here's uh, July data. Butter exports are top five destinations. Um, 2017 is the purple, so Canada has actually been our top export destination, at least in the latest monthly data. And that was that was a once in a millennial kind of opportunity, as I recall. <laughs> okay. Um, but you're seeing it, you know, with that giant spread between Europe, which would, you know, typically be an export competitor to the United States. Uh, if we can't move it into Europe, maybe we can move it into uh, other markets. And you think... Yeah, yeah yes. Yep. So, and, so, and they don't have the product to move anywhere anyway. So they, you know, there are some holes being left in other parts of the international market. Okay. So Saudi Arabia, I mean, other Middle Eastern countries, you think we could see a surge in, in exports to places like that? Yeah. yeah, that's a month's worth of data. Yep. Yeah, I just, I don't put much stock in a month's worth of data. Um, I think you need, um, you know, a rolling average or something, a three or six month average or, um, uh, you know, to really see what's going on in export market, even in the domestic market. Uh, there's just too many, um, you know, a, a ship got delayed on its delivery by three days and so it's now an August export instead of a July export, things like that. 
yeah. need to look over a longer period of time to really get a sense. And I, top of my head, I don't know what we've been doing into the Middle East for the past several months. Great. Um, so another question here is about uh, supply. Okay, moving on to supply. Top line here is in the United States, you're looking at, this is for 2018 now, uh, you'd be looking at the United States to grow 1.4% next year. Um, we've also got a world outlook here. This is from your report as well. Um, New Zealand and EU are expected year over year increases for the foreseeable future. You know, Europe, I'm just looking, Jerry, for the month of September. Most of the processors are paying about 40 euro cents per liter. That's about 20, that's over $21 per hundred weight. Uh, that's the current milk price in, you know, much of the major production zones of Europe. Um, New Zealand and Australia, you've got Australia here mentioned as well, forecasted plus two, plus three percent. Uh, the U.S. seems to be the one that's maybe hindered the most in the sense that our prices have come down quite a bit and our basis is falling. Um, but just to take it down at the world level, and again, here's your price chart, um, or rather your, your chart of world milk supply. What do you see happening out into the future at a, at a global level? Where do you see this going? Well, at the global level, um, I, I would... I, I want to back you up just a second and look at my four components of that global level. Okay. With that European price where it is, milk production should be relatively strong unless Mother Nature does something goofy. Uh, USA production, uh, I, I think that number, we will probably uh, revise that up uh, given yesterday's report with good, strong, you know, a 2% year over year growth. July revised to 2% year-over-year growth, uh, the number of cows continuing to build, uh, production per cow pulsing a little bit of a, uh, you know, a, a gain, get, getting back close to trend. So we're going to see more milk here. New Zealand, we've got a little glitch in the weather at the moment, but by and large, uh, uh, I'm expecting strong production there. Some growth in Australia, although they're becoming less and less of a factor internationally because of previous price declines. So I see uh, plenty of milk out uh, through the end of next year, actually, worldwide, with two uh, exceptions. One, you know, some kind of uh, weather impact, screw up production in any given region. And the other thing that I see in the caution flag that I would wave here in the U.S. in terms of milk production is, well, we tend to focus on feed volume and feed prices. Uh, I think we're going to have some serious feed quality issues uh, that, that hound us during 2018, and I'm not sure we're going to keep that one to 1.3% increase in production per cow intact uh, through all of next year. So globally, I, we're going to have more milk than a year ago, um, probably easily uh, a percent and a half, two percent, and uh, maybe more if all the, all the ducks line up in a positive fashion. So you'd be seeing more Kind yep. of positive we'll lines more, would be your we'll more bars like the like the June bar. Yep. Okay. Very good, um, Jerry. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your time with us and your insights, and look forward to seeing you soon. Don't forget to subscribe to Rice Dairy TV. Mm -hmm.